Hi there, this is James from Junior Developer Central and in this video we're going to take a quick look at arrow functions in JavaScript, uh, otherwise known as fat arrows, and it's a kind of new way of defining functions as of ES6, so not really that new as of recording this video, a few years old really, and it's just another way to define a function, or rather a function expression, that can make your code a little bit cleaner and reduce a lot of lines of unnecessary code in your programs. So let's have a look at how we used to define function expressions and also how you can convert those to the arrow function syntax. So you've probably come across defining a function in this way. So let's just take the world's simplest function of adding two numbers together. So let's define a function which takes two parameters a and b and then just returns the result of those added together. So this is actually a function declaration, so we're not actually assigning uh, an anonymous function to a variable, we're actually defining a new function, and there are a, a few subtleties for doing that, because now we can just use the add numbers function and pass in two values to get the result. But a function expression is when we assign a, an anonymous function to a variable, so we could rewrite that as uh, add numbers as the variable name and then just say here's an anonymous function which takes two parameters again and just returns the result. So if we go ahead and run add numbers again and pass in some different values perhaps it will do the same thing as before. And just a little note, um, if there's any ES6 purists that they're screaming at the screen saying I should be using let or const, it's just really for ease of use that I'm using var here so I can redefine the add numbers function a few times as you'll see in a second. So that's how you'd use a function expression to assign an anonymous function to a variable in kind of old JavaScript. So let's have a look at how that looks with the arrow or sometimes called the fat arrow syntax. So we'll say again var add numbers equals and then we're going to use this arrow syntax to set up our function and in the parentheses here is where we define our parameters to the function and we can literally just then say a plus b and now let's just test that out, still see that it's working, so we'll do two and two again. You can see we've defined the exact same function as above, but this time we've used the arrow syntax. So hopefully you can see already we've managed to get rid of the actual word function, and JavaScript will just interpret this expression that we've created here as creating a new function and assigning it to the add numbers variable. But don't stop there, it gets even better. What we can actually do as well is if we look at the arrow function that we've got here we can make it even neater and shorter by actually removing some more of these lines of code. So what we can actually say is everything after the the fat arrow that we have here is what we refer to as an implicit return so we can actually do away with the curly braces and even the return statement as well so this is exactly the same as the function that we had just a moment ago and you can see we've omitted the function keyword and also now the return statement as well but it will do exactly the same thing so anything the right of this fat arrow that we've set up will be returned as the value from the function. And this only works if you don't have the curly braces. If I was to do something like this, I would actually get an undefined result come back from that. So we need to make sure that we don't have any curly braces in there, which removes the implicit return that we have. And just to prove that one more last time, let's say add numbers and what do we have before two and four? And you can see now it's still doing exactly the same thing, but we've condensed that initial function that we defined, which looked a little bit like this, into literally a couple of sections of code and literally just all on one line as well. So it's quite common if you've got a really simple function uh, to actually just set it up in this way and keep all of those functions that you create in a nice, neat, orderly manner. So that's pretty much all you really need to know about ES6 arrow functions. Um, there are a few nuances that you could we could talk about in terms of the this keyword and how the arrow function handles that, but I think that's something probably best covered when we're talking about how the this keyword works within JavaScript functions. So I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you did, drop me a comment and like the video just to let me know. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more web development tips and tricks.